Welcome to another mini tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Inkscape to show you the use of geometric grids when using the Shape Builder tool. I originally created these 15 grids for Affinity Designer. In the new version 2 it has the Shape Builder as well and converted them into the format that works in Inkscape. You can download the files for free, the link is in the description below. I created these with the intention to get a quick start with the Shape Builder. The files consist of a black background, a grid on top and a group with a test I created to make sure they work. So if I take the test off again, hide that one and show the grid. You can see how the shape was created from that grid. Let's look at something a little bit more complex. This grid is made up of rectangles and two triangles plus a rotated teardrop shape. Other grids are made up of rectangles and circles. Let's open one of the files, a simple diagonal grid. This grid consists of rectangles rotated 45 degrees and two triangles added to it. In this case, I combined all the shapes into one using the pass combine. So there's just one pass for the whole grid. You can go in and break it apart to see the elements that it consists of. Sometimes it makes sense to work with the broken parts rather than the combined shape as it is less complex and the shape builder seems to have problems as soon as things get too complex. Before going into the shape builder I like to duplicate the grid. The shape builder loses the original shape. I like to keep my base for further use. I duplicate the group and hide the original and then go in, select everything and use the shape builder tool. Once you start the shape builder, the display changes. It goes to gray and an outline view. In the top menu, you have two options, add and delete, as well as the OK and cancel. By default, it's set to add. If I click on the delete, the objects I select go pink and are taken off the design. When I change back to add, my selections go blue, the shapes stay and go to a darker blue. Connected shapes are signified by a wide outline. I click on the first shape, hold the mouse button down and move it across to select all the other shapes that are supposed to be combined in one element. I do the same thing with the others. I can always undo and it'll take just the last shape off. I can create two separate shapes first and then still combine them later on by clicking on one, holding the mouse button down and moving to the other. Once finished, I click on the OK and it creates the new shapes for me. I can now go in, change the color, add a gradient, modify and edit the shapes like any other vector shape. The next design consists of rectangles and circles. Circles are a little bit more complicated. Even in Boolean operations, they tend to cause additional nodes. For the best results, try to use as few circles as possible and avoid tiny fragments created by the circles. I duplicated the grid group before starting the shape builder. I click on my first object, hold the mouse button down and drag across to select the other elements that make up the shape. Once I click confirm, I get the four shapes that make up this design. I can select shapes from my creation and go in with the shape builder again to combine them. In this case, I have the two parts. I select both of them, combine them, and they turn to one. I can do the same thing by using the pass union to create just two shapes from those four. Next up is a more complex design. I have a grid with diagonal lines made up of rectangles and triangles. I duplicate the base group before going into the shape builder. 
The more complex a design is, the longer it takes the shape builder to initialize. Sometimes you gotta be a little patient. Here we have issues with the pattern. Some of the triangles got combined with the rectangles. So rather than select the group, I select the elements that make up the group, start the shape builder again. And there we are. All the shapes are there for me to build with. In this case, it was the complexity of the grid. In other cases, it might be too many shapes overlapping in the same spot, creating tiny fragments. When you have elements missing from your design, check for lines, bitmaps or clones. None of those are supported by the shape builder. The last grid I want to show you in this video is the lotus flower based on rectangles, two triangles and teardrop shapes on top. I use the break apart on the grid just in case as it is a more complex shape and consists of circle like shapes and then duplicate my group, select everything and take it into the shape builder. As you can see there is one element missing the two straight lines are not followed through on the right hand side. I will ignore that for now. I tried to find the problem but couldn't while recording this video. I use the delete mode first, delete the corners, then makes it easier to select those shapes and then select the inner parts I duplicate my base shapes again to create the inner leaves that I did not create the first time. I select everything, go back into the shape builder and create the elements that are missing. Holding shift while clicking will switch from add to delete mode. If I hold shift and click on this shape, it should disappear. And now I'm just having a bit of fun with the delete mode. Once I click confirm, I have my desired shape. I can color those, give them the gradient I want and play around with the design. If you want to know more about the shape of the tool in general, not just about the grids, check out my video on the basics of shape builder with six different design examples. You can modify and create your own grids. Just keep in mind that you need to have shapes, not lines to divide elements. Then you need a certain spacing. Don't get too tight. Don't overlap too many elements in the same spot. Other than that, have fun, play with it and enjoy this great tool. Knowing your way around Shape Builder can make your work in Inkscape a lot easier. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like, turn on the notification and I will see you again soon.